stream. It's just uh, my usual lull of stuff. I just like I don't feel like it. And if I can't if I can't bring myself to do it, I just can't. Anyway, um I'm I'm just gonna say it's probably hormones or whatever. Cause I'm just like I don't know. I just I can't. It's how I'm like I'm like Ugh. I nope, not happening. <sighs> but today I feel a little better I think. Well I loaded myself up with like caffeine, so I should be able to put some energy into it. I'll probably read extra long today because uh, I haven't in a while so. Let's try to do a two hour. But I think I had too much caffeine, so I also feel a little lightweighted and jittery, so let's hope that's not the case. I'm gonna drink some water in case. The book of the single truth was sealed in crystal by Battler. Why does that keep happening? Until the seal is undone, I can't even stick the key in the keyhole. Okay, I want to say that again. The book of the single truth was sealed in crystal by Battler. Until the seal is undone, I can't even stick the key in the keyhole. You can remove this, right? Of course. They were in a vast, dimly lit space. To sum it up in a phrase, it was like a trench in the ocean floor. No, it's not quite right. It was a library. However, the number of books and the height of the shelves vastly surpassed all of those that existed in the world of humans. If height is the measure of greatness, then the gods must surely be giants taller than mountains. This place appeared to be a library big enough and grand enough for such gods. Each individual book was no larger than those from the human world. However, the shelves holding them stood like the walls of a valley, or rather, a deep sea ocean trench. So, Angie and the others looked like little more than a few small butterflies who had wandered into this vast library. Like minuscule deep sea fish swimming about all alone in an ocean pit. This is more like ice than a sea. If you just steal it away from Battler and put it under the rays of the sun, it will fade away by itself as time passes. Is there some way to smash it open? Do you thaw your frozen fish by smashing it with a hammer? Sorry, I was just always terrible in cooking class. Wait, sorry, I was terrible in cooking class. Kitties, thaw the seal. My bad, okay. When Burn Castle whispered from the dark ocean pit deep below them, several emerald gleam glint. <laughs> Let's try that again. When Burn Castle whispered from the dark ocean pit deep below them, several emerald green glints appeared and gathered like a school of fish. Burn Castle threw the Book of the Single Truth down to them. And only after several dozen seconds passed, the school of fish seemed to gather around it and carry it away. Those few seconds made it clear just how deep this bookshelf trench went. Angie was once again dumbfounded by this unimaginably vast and godly library. We can just let them handle the rents. And you really will let me see what's inside. If that is your wish, I'll grant it. And of course, I won't be able to read it myself without that key of yours. Angie silently gripped the golden key in her pocket. This journey has been so long, and so strange. In search of the truth from 12 years ago, I left my home, met President Okanogi, met Amakusa. And at some point, the adventure became wrapped in the illusion of the witch. However, here I am. Shiromiya Ava's diary is here. The truth inside of it is sitting right before me. Rest for a while. Even I don't have enough free time to spend it all with you. 
Well, I'm not really tired. Erica, serve Angie some tea or something. Yes, my master! Erica popped into existence out of nowhere and bowed to her master. Burncastle, if you're planning to use me to steal both the key and the book, you won't get off easy. How dare you say such a thing to my master! Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a really loud sound of a plane going on. Can you hurry up? I hate, I hate machines so much. I, I just, I just hate dealing with, I have to go in the backlog. I can't, I cannot. Hurry up! Oh God, I can't, I, I, don't, I don't know if the plane is being heard. I'm just gonna, I have to wait. Oh my God! How close is this plane? And how long is it gonna take? I, I still hear it. Oh my god. I don't know. I can't. I can't read until it, I'm sure it's gone. I, I hate vehicles. I hate loud things. I mean, I'm a loud thing, but I don't last forever. And I prefer the sounds of humans over machines, usually. Anyway. <sighs> Let's reread that again. How dare you say such a thing to my master! Sorry. After my long experience with witches, I decide not to trust normal words. Very well. I promise it with the rent room. When the seal in the book of the single truth is dissolved, you, Angie, will be the first to read it. Is that good enough for you? For some time, Angie considered the witch's words, searching for some kind of trap hidden within them. There's no guarantee whether... Wait, oops. There's no guarantee greater than a witch's red truth. Angie understood this well enough. If she started to doubt even this red truth, there would be nothing left to trust in this entire world. If she began to suspect even this, then even the truth would no longer be truth. Is there something more that you want? No, I'm fine. If she wanted to read the Book of the Single Truth, she would need Brent Castle's assistance. And she finally realized that she had nothing to gain by complaining more and annoying this witch further. Once you dissolve the barrier, call me right away. Of course. I also want to read it as soon as possible. I'll call for you at once. Burns spun away from them and then vanished into the dark bookshelf trench. As she saw a school of emerald green fish appear and fall behind Burn Castle, could those be her familiars? As she stared at the emerald lights that resembled some sort of deep sea fish, Angie was poked from behind. Let's go, Comrade Angie. You're creeping him out. So please just call me Angie. Then you can call me Erika-sama. Let's get going, comrade Erika. <laughs> That's the only time I'll use an honorific, okay? The pair began to swim in the direction Erika indicated. Swims the... <laughs> the pair... The... Ugh. Oh, sorry. The pair began to swim in the direction Erika indicated. Swim seemed to be a better word for it than fly. Just what is this place? It's way too big to be called a library. It's not like you'll be able to remember its name, so why not just call it the library? I'll decide what I can or can't remember. Tell me. It's the great witch of theater-going drama and Specting's noble city of carefully selected books. Yeah, the library works just fine. Knew you'd say that. <laughs> the city of books. Yeah, the name fits. The bookshelves on either side of this canyon are skyscrapers. If I think of those emerald green lights flowing beneath us as headlights on the highway, then this really does seem like a city of books. 
These aren't normal books, are they? That's right. Each volume is packed with an ensemble play. They look like books from here, but if you open one up, you'll find a whole world inside. So even our long tail is only one of these. Great witches who live on a far, far higher plane than we do are hardly any different from a creator or a god. From their perspective, our little tale is worth little more than a single book, if it's even worth that. From a theorgoer's perspective, our individual lives are hardly worth anything at all. If they're recording an entire world in a single volume, then my life probably isn't even worth a single line. But we're the main characters. I am, and so are you. That's right! Even if the tale of the gods doesn't mention us. We're always the main characters in the stories we write for ourselves. Becoming aware of that fact is the first thing that separates witches from humans. Oh! <clears throat> Hi! <laughs> it's been a while! <laughs> It's been a while. Sorry I got sick and everything. <laughs> they were on a balcony, which was really a room-sized section that had dug out of the bookshelf with no guardrail along the cliff. It didn't go in a very deep, so it looked like a room that had been cut in half. It was filled with the tools of everyday life, as though this was Erica's hidden house. My master has ordered me to serve you some tea. So if you don't feel like drinking, I'll have to pour it into you with a funnel. If you try, I'll have to serve you some matcha. Matcha? Like aunt likes niece. <laughs> I had to put in a dumb joke like that, I'm sorry. Nothing. Just talking to myself. Ignoring Erica as she made tea, Angie looked down upon the bizarre, otherworldly scene below. Until Erica finished getting the tea ready, the scene held Angie's gaze like it was sucking out her soul. This might sound strange coming from me. What? Oops, sorry, that was Erica's line. I'm stupid, let's try that again. This might sound strange coming from me. What? You actually made a deal to throw away your life to learn the truth, huh? That's impressive. I had nothing to gain from life. It was easy for me to trade away the time I had left. My master really does take to idle whims, to think that she would make a contract for the meaningless life of a powerless girl. <laughs> Angie chuckled, not bothering to argue. That was exactly right. How incredible that Brancasta would lend her power to a worthless life that was trying to throw itself away. Well, my master is the witch who controls miracles, so it makes sense that she appeared for even a worthless girl like you. Good point. Even if her castle hadn't appeared, I still would have taken the step off that ledge that day. Yep. Fuck happiness, and I hope I'm gonna be a hater, especially if it kills me. <laughs> Angie, no! You really are a cheap and easy woman, aren't you? Well then, just how much are you worth? Me? The way Erica cackled was disturbing. Still, Angie realized that this was her way of answering the question. People don't become witches of their own choosing. If they're capable of living, all people want to live their lives as humans. When something comes along to trip up that life, that's when the road to living as a witch opens. Even Frudo Erica, who calls herself the Witch of Truth, must be like this. Two witches of truth sitting there drinking tea without even looking at each other are exactly the same. I like exposing the truth. I know that. I like exposing secrets and watching those people turn pale as they wonder how I figured it out. That's when I know I've reached the truth, and it's a moment of ecstasy. There's something seriously wrong with you. Well then, what does the truth mean to you? 
Angie was about to give an immediate answer, but she bit back her words, and she gulped, not knowing how to respond. After all, to Angie, the truth itself was the goal. At first, it was out of hatred. But Ushiromiya Eva, the sole survivor of Rokinjima, be the culprit behind everything. She hated Eva. But she had no proof that her aunt was the culprit. And of course, Eva never talked about what happened on that island. So at first, the truth meant proof that Eva was the culprit in Angie's eyes. However, that feeling withered away with Eva's death. Now that Eva was dead, even if Angie did find some kind of proof, it wouldn't mean anything. So eventually, the truth Angie wanted to find became nothing more than the simple desire to know what happened on that island that day. However, one thing was obvious. Even if she did find out the truth, that wouldn't bring any of her family back to her. It might not mean anything at all. You're going to expose the truth of your beloved Onichan is hiding even though it's meaningless. You're the one who's not making any sense. Erica laughed mockingly. And she laughed too, as though she agreed. And so, my own truth became my goal. Maybe you could even call it my reason for living. So once you do reach the truth, there won't be any point or purpose to you living anymore, right? That's right. So I'll die. Hasn't it been long enough? I've already lived 12 years too long. And I at least deserve to have a witch appear and grant my wish in my final moments. Or to put it simply, you're just tired of life. Does that sum it up? Yeah. So both my reason for living and my very existence are completely meaningless. That's why this goal of finding the book of a single truth has put a little sparkle back into my life. Now that it's nearly over, at least on that score, I'm grateful to her castle. I see. Valor wants you to live so he hid the gold mine that would lead you to death. I think I pity Valor for the first time. After all, you can't choose your little sister. Sorry, Onichan. I'm tired of life. Twelve whole years, I've been living off nothing but the illusion that someone might come home someday. Just let me find peace already. Finding the truth of that day is how I've chosen to mark the end of my life. For twelve years, I believed in a miracle. But there was no miracle. I won't believe in miracles anymore. The book of a single truth, huh? Of course. I'm also dying to find out what's at. Let's try it again. The book of a single truth, huh? Of course. I'm also dying to find out what's in it. But from what I hear, it doesn't sound like the truth inside is something spectacular enough to mark the end of your life with. Yeah. At first, I hoped there would be something earth-shattering in it. But now, I've calmed down. I guess you could say. Any truth searched for by a worthless person is bound to be worthless. It'll probably make for a fitting end to your worthless life. Yeah. I'm sure it will. Angie was already starting to realize something. Regardless of Ava's reason for staying silent. The real events of that day probably weren't anything or shattering. Some sort of malfunction made the bomb in that secret underground base explode. Yes. It was just... an accident. But the public already believed that some sort of conspiracy surround... Let's try that again, I'm sorry. But the public already believed that some sort of conspiracy surrounded the events of that day. So that's what they expected. Ava was a suspect herself, so of course no one would believe her claim that nothing strange happened. Naturally, Angie didn't believe her either. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I'll try to do this every time I have time. I don't know, sometimes I play. I've been playing other games just to mix some stuff up or whatever. Well, that's because I have my sore throat and stuff. I mean... I mean, but sometimes I've been playing other games for fun. 
In that case, shutting up like a clam would have been the better alternative. It's hardly surprising that Ava chose to say nothing. Right now, I don't feel any sense of accomplishment. I just feel... sort of worn out and listless. Being able to withstand the truth is what makes someone like a witch of truth. Comrade Angie, it looks like you don't possess that strength after all. If you did, you wouldn't be thinking about dying. You're right. I dreamed that someone might come back for 12 years. I just used Beatrice's cat box to shut away the truth, denying it for all that time. When you read the book of the single truth, I wonder what will happen to you. Who knows? Won't Burncastle carry out the contract by slicing my head off with a scythe or something? Or will I be turned into chunks of meat again? Maybe I'll get some salt and pepper this time. I see. So that's where the chunks of meat thing came from. Did you say something? No, nothing at all. Anyway, would you like some more tea? No, thank you. Angie listlessly gazed from down the balcony with no handrail, down to the darkness of the abyss at the bottom of the bookshelf ravine. No, the gap between the bookshelf skyscrapers. From the beginning until the end of my journey, I haven't taken a single step away from the spot. This journey of mine, not even a single step long, will end soon. Are those lines of light flowing down at the bottom? All those? Probably a group of guests coming to the great Lady Aura's party. Guests? Great witches from the Senate, Voyager witches who are trying to escape boredom in their endless travels, powerful witches who have woken from the century long sleeps, as well as witches who control the future world and noble witch hunters. And so she's planning to hold a grand party tonight. What? Is it a birthday party or something? From what I've heard, while the great Lady Beatrice, the Endless Witch, is an outsider among witches, she's also a genius who created Beatrice's cat box from her formidable magical compendium, an endless factory capable of producing endless tales. From my point of view, she's just stupid and a weak finisher, but in the world of great witches, she's apparently pretty famous. So, this is Beatrice's birthday party. My master says she'll be holding a dinner party with Beatrice's guts. After all, it's only natural, right? The cat box was only able to generate infinite tales because there was no single truth. However, tonight, the single truth will be revealed thanks to your key, and that means the cat box will be open. Really, it's no different from slicing open her chest as she still lives and tearing out what's inside. Everyone in that huge crowd that looks like it's a packed freeway is going to that dinner party. I'm not sure what's stronger if my shock at how famous Beatrice is, a more erosion of those sleaze bags. For you, the book of the single truth is nothing more than an end. However, for all those enjoying the mystery of Rokinjima, this is the event that can't be missed. I see. So that's a crowd of those goats who are chewing Onichan's game board apart. Angie's analogy was an accurate one. The crowd far, far below them was made up of nobles wearing beautiful outfits and goat masks. They were also intent on tearing the guts of Beatrice's cat box. They couldn't even hide the drool trickling from their mouths. Those gluttonous goat nobles who derived pleasure from the violence of exposing the truth were in a line of cars heading towards the meeting place. Looks like this is the end for Beatrice and the cat box. Bands and the others have holed up in the Golden Land. The last remnants of the game board. Valor and Beethoven straight to their defenses and have destroyed the first wave, but they won't be able to stop the second. My master has given me an armada capable of destroying the very concept of defensive measures. The Golden Land's ramparts are as good as gone. Those goats who appeared all over the island, they're the personification of random opinions in the future. 
and all of them want this island's tale to be a treasure. That's right! Those goats keep getting born from the sea of the internet. That first wave was just a riffraff. The second wave will be entirely different. It's made up from the best of the best. Elite goats selected from the crowd that are capable of denying all the cowering pieces one by one. In total, they number in the hundreds of thousands. A hundred thousand people to deny the existence of a few thousand... Blech. Let's try that again. A hundred thousand people to deny the existence of a few dozen hiding on an island. Looks like this is it for Onichan too. Are you sure you're ready? You understand that Ushinomiya Balor died in 1986, and this man is an illusion created by the Catbox? Yeah, I understand. Regardless of whether he's my real brother or an illusion, regardless of whether who, oops, let's try that again. I'm sorry. Regardless of whether he's my real brother or an illusion, regardless of whether he's who I'd like him to be or not. Valor, who created this game board for my sake, will die. No. I'm just going to accept the fact that he was already dead. So it's not like he was actually going to die. And she thought to herself, shouldn't performing her brother's last rites be a responsibility? This is her final trial, which she had assigned to herself. All those people down the game board for the personification of Angie's naivety. Denying the existence of all, would she finally be able to accept the truth? No, it's not right. I'm not even. Let's try that again. No, it's not right. I'm not being honest, even with myself. The bizarre Halloween party may have been an illusion. That didn't make it any less heartwarming. Michan said it himself. True, that Halloween party may have been an illusion. However, he's trying to use that party to tell me something. About that second wave. My master has appointed me to be their commander. Leave it to me, Angie. My master isn't so malicious that she'd make you dirty your own hands. Yes, that might be kind of her. These are my lingering attachments we're talking about. To be grateful to her castle. If she were really cruel, she probably would have ordered me to take charge of the second wave and execute my own family. Comrade Angie, you're a witch of truth, aren't you? That's right. Probably. And accept the truth, okay? Finally, after 12 years, the single truth lies before you. I'll just sit around here until Burn Castle breaks the seal. You'll probably be summoned as a guest for the party. We've got a mirror, so maybe you should wipe that sleep from your eyes. And maybe you should shave before heading out to bed. Let's try that again. And maybe you should shave before heading out to battle. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I messed up a little. Fumbled. <clears throat> It floated there in the empty air, the door to the Golden Land. At its base, there was nothing except some floor tiling, about as thick as a rug, so it was fairly hard to imagine that this was Kinzo's study. By this point, all the game board except the Golden Land had been eaten away, leaving only this door floating in a sea of nothingness. There were two shapes in front of that door. They were Battler and Banto. They may have not been literally covered with wounds, but they definitely seemed to be dead tired. Balor leaning against the door seemed to have finally caught his breath. Banta was also sitting against the door, letting her legs dangle gracelessly. Could the battle against that force really be called a battle? It was more like a mere pushing contest, an increasingly small bit of ground that remained. They had wanted to protect at least Kinzo's study no matter what, and the only fruit of their desperate struggle was a thin bit of flooring that they were sitting on now. Those goats fell into the abyss whenever they had nowhere to stand. So now, with so much of the floor gone, there was no way for them to attack anymore. If Balor thought this, his naive hopes were quickly crushed. Looks like we're surrounded. They probably plan to gather their forces and crush us in a single stroke.
One Piece! I'm sorry, I had to make a dumb joke. I started watching One Piece, so. Oh my god! I can't believe Luffy and the gang are visiting! I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Stretching across the ocean horizon that surrounded the door at their backs was an encirclement of countless large sailing ships. As they could clearly see, the decks of those ships were packed with goats, with some more of those foolish and over-eager ones spilling over the edges into the emptiness below. Dang. I've gone through a lot of crazy stuff in your games, but being surrounded by pirate ships is definitely a first for me. They probably do possess the strength to break through the Golden Land's perimeter. Those cannons are no bluff. Doubtless, they will be able to use those to smash through this door and pour in. Along the sides of each ship were several open gun ports, each with a cannon pointing at the door. With this many ships all around them fired all of those at once. There's no point in trying to imagine what would happen next. Valley and Beethoven and Mason hung their heads. How long will the Golden Lamp perimeter hold out against those cannons? I do not know. However, since they are still awaiting reinforcements after amassing that many soldiers, I doubt the barrier will break that easily. True. I can't think of any other reason to knit. True. I can't think of any other reason to delay your attack without even sending terms for surrender. I hope we can take advantage of this time they give us. Time is always the ally of the weaker side. After all, we can always hope for a miracle. Though it might just lead us into further despair. At that moment, something small and hard hit Valor in the forehead. Ow! What the heck is this, Competo? It's me! I know where Burr and the others are! The candy was Landa Delta's transformed body. She was the only one of their allies capable of crossing the Sea of Fragments. Spectacular! That's the great Lady Lambda Delta for you! They can see us here! Let's talk inside! This is starting to get messy. Got it. Is anyone there? When Balor knocked through the door, it opened and Shadow and Kenon came into view. You called for us. My apologies, but we need you two to keep a lookout. Leave it to us. When they begin their attack, don't worry about fighting them. Escape to the Golden Land as soon as they start. Don't worry about closing the door. But that means... They're planning to ignore the door and smash the Golden Land directly. Making a last stand here won't do anyone any good. I understand. We'll take care of things here, so go inside and work on a counterattack. We shall. We're counting on you. Valor and Banjo traded places with Shannon and Kano and returned to the Golden Land. A gentle rain poured down over the Golden Land's Rose Garden. The weather here reflected the hearts of those inside it. The quietly falling raindrops spoke for the pain felt by those who could do nothing but hide here, waiting for the enemy's final assault. When they returned to the arbor, that piece of Competo flew out of Balor's pocket, jumped onto the table, and returned to its original form. I haven't had a thrill like this for years! How do believe I find myself in such a tense situation even after becoming a witch? Let's get down to business! Where the heck are Angie and Burncastle? They're in the City of Books! I've heard of it. They say it's a place where great witches, travelers of the sea, throw countless fragments of the form of books. You mean the great witch of theater going drama and spectators, noble city of carefully selected books, yes. Oops, let's try that again. You mean the great witch of theater going drama and spectating his noble city of carefully selected books, yes. The great Lady Aura is the ruler of the city of books. Indeed, that would be a fitting place for those two to go. Nice going, Lady Lambda Delta. Hard to believe you could pick out that spot so quickly from all the other possible hiding places. Actually, it was pretty easy. I didn't even have to search since they're advertising as loud as they can. They're playing a huge 
tried to celebrate the announcement of a great secret. The secret to the cat box of the great lady of Beatrice, the Endless Witch. <laughs> I see. They haven't been delaying their attack because they await reinforcements, and because the party has not yet begun. So in this party, they plan to use Angie's key and reveal the contents of the Book of the Single Truth. You've got it! Aura hasn't led an event like this for ages, and she's gathering VIP guests from all over the place! The Book of the Single Truth will probably be the party's final showpiece. That means we still have a shot at taking Angie the key back. Time-wise, that may be true. However, there's a really simple and obvious problem. What? The City of Books is a secret realm under the supervision of the Senate. It's protected by a holy barrier. Only a witch of the Senate can enter it. Have they invited any non-senators to the party? They have! It looks like they're being given special invitations, which allow them to enter the sacred realm for a limited time. Invitations? My, my. Now this could be interesting. That's what I thought! However, there's a strict policy on punctuality, so these invitations automatically become useless unless you present them before the party begins. And I'm afraid to say that the party started a short while ago. In other words, it's too late to try stealing an invitation from a guest who's running late. That's right! So what do we do now? Could someone get popcorn? I like some candy flavor this time! As an outsider, I hate to barge into this conversation, but we seem to have no options left. We're already done for, aren't we? Can we do anything except sit here until they attack? There must be something we can do! That's right. There's just one thing we can do. What's that? We can keep on struggling for each second of survival and hope for a miracle. A miracle? So we're stuck defending the Alamo. Surrender isn't an option. We can only hold out as long as we can waiting for a miracle. What do you... What kind of miracle? There's a chance, maybe one in a million, that Angie will change her mind for some reason and come back. <laughs> With a probability such as that, it would truly be a miracle. We are here to await Angie's return. Yes. This right here is the only place Angie can call home. So we must defend it to the last minute waiting for her to come back. Awaiting the return of one's master is a servant's duty. No, now that we are here, I go down and prepare for whatever may come. That's good. All of us are prepared. We are the Chester Sisters Imperial Guard. will fulfill our oath and remain by Great Lady Beatrice's side until the bitter end. 45 here. No problems. I'll fight until the end. Finally, a fitting place to die, yeah? No problems for Barge to ten, yeah? The Seven Sisters of Purgatory will stay with Beatrice and Valor until it's all over. The Six Younger Sisters also show their resolve with their eyes. I soon jump from. We'll serve until the end. The former SSBD's got your back, too. And I ask that you lend us your power as well. Me? No way! Didn't I just give you some excellent intel? I think I've done more than my fair share, don't you? How do you know that Angie's in the city of books? <laughs> I saw her with my own eyes, of course! I never trust anything unless I see it for myself. Which means you're qualified to enter the sacred realm called the city of books, right? Indeed. The great lady Lambda Delta is a witch of the Senate, after all. Lambda Delta... You guys! You're not gonna tell me to do more work, are you? My, what an unexpected development! Lady Lana Delta is the only one who can enter the city of books! Could that possibly mean <laughs> that this is Lady Lana Delta's time to shine? And not kidding around! Are you people crazy? You're telling me to go all by myself and sneak into there one more time and then bring Angie back out here? Several dozen people surrounding Lambda Delta all nodded in unison. How stupid can you be? If I save Angie, I'll be crashing the Great Aurora's party, get it? I have the whole world as my enemy! And what did it for me? Nothing, obviously! There's nothing you could possibly 
you offer me. That'd be worth getting on the bad side of Aurora and her monster friends. You'll get to see a happy ending where Aurora and Castle schemes are crushed. And she comes back and everyone makes peace with one another. What do you say, Lady Lambda Delta? There could be no greater thrill. If you pull out such a marvelous feat, you'd be able to forget your illness for a thousand years, would you not? We're begging for you, Lambda Delta. Lend us your power. Please, please, we're begging you. Help us save Angie. Everyone surrounded Lambda Delta asking for her help. Please, Lady Lambda Delta, only you can do this. Give us your strength. I'll show you the greatest of tales. And you'll get to see it from the front row, so please let us your strength! Shut up! Shut the hell up! Landa Delta leapt to her feet and crushed the popcorn in her hands. Sweet candy flavored popcorn flew out all over the place, hitting everyone in the face. It might have looked funny, however, no one laughed. Landa Delta's face was filled with a rage that none of them had seen before. Please stop getting the wrong idea. I'm a spectator. A spectator! I'm just a guest who was invited by Banto to come and watch this game. So why should I risk my life for you people? You think you'll get a happy ending and Angie comes back? Are you really that stupid? Burn her forces will come sweeping through here mad with rage and wipe us all out! There's only one reason I'm here. And that's because Leon over there said I'd get to see an interesting show. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll get to see a sublimely interesting tale very soon. A sad, sad tragedy as you fight desperately against Burns' forces and get wiped out one by one. Oh, I'm sure you'll get to see one last time to shine as you're torn apart. If I just wait a little, I'll get to see all of that, won't I? Pretty soon all of you will be dead. But not me! I'm a spectator, a guest. There's absolutely no reason for me to die with you. No one was able to say a word. In the still silence, there was no sound except for that of the rain. Even Lambda Delta hung her head in dismay. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm totally lame, aren't I? Sure, if I stood up right now and said, leave it to me, my popularity would surge and I'd probably make it to the top three in the next character ranking contest. But still, unlike the rest of you, I'm not a character who appears in the story. I can't die. It's not like midnight and you're telling me the climax of the show is coming. Oops, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I messed up. It's like it's midnight and you're telling me the climax of the show is coming up next. But tomorrow's Monday and I've clearly got cleaning duty at school. We live in completely different worlds. And so, and so, <sighs> Lana Delta stared as though dizzy and plopped down onto a chair. Then she became expressionless like a doll, just staring at a single point in space silently. Sorry. Valor softly apologized. However, Lambda Delta remained expressionless. It's not fair for us to force you to risk something on your own. Not when we haven't exhausted all our options. We'll fight here and defend the spot until the last moment. We'll believe in the miracle of Angie choosing us over the single truth. If we weren't prepared to do that, we could hardly ask you to give up your life along with the rest of us. Valor rose from his seat and spun around. Battler. I'll switch places with a pair outside. When the enemy comes, I want to be in the front lines. That's the fastest and most direct way I can show Lambda Delta my determination. I shall go as well. Teacher, please find Lady Lambda Delta some more popcorn. Beto. I know Angie will return. Without belief, even miracles that might have occurred will not. You can't win a lottery unless you buy a ticket. Beto also stood up and followed Balor. Everyone, let's do what we can to prepare the fight. Yeah, he'll be stupid to just sit around here doing nothing. Good point. Let's at least give him a good show at the end. 
We've got to make sure there's a place that Angie can call home. We should hold a strategic conference, too. Yeah. We have furniture, weapons, demons, and inquisitors on our side. There's gotta be some way for these mismatched forces to cooperate. Let's go, little sisters. Break time's over. Chester troops rise. The humans and illusions all rose to their feet and left the arbor. Afterwards, only Lambda Delta remained, still staring blankly at a point in empty space. Alright, um, let me take a little bit of a short break to move the chair in case I have to do anything that I'm not exactly always comfortable with. I'm moving the table! my body a little, so I have to drink a little more water. Okay. Now let me start. Yeah, when I mean small break, I mean like, not that much. <laughs> I don't know, I have a very bad measure of time, so. Black tea smells nice. It's an instanter from a tea bag. Oh, would you like some too, Comrade Ava? We're out of cups, so you'll have to use a funnel. A gold butterfly drifted onto the balcony and turned into Ava. How's Burncastle doing? It'll be a while longer before she breaks the seal on the book of a single truth. That's what I came to talk about. She says the seal has been broken. Congratulations! So that time has finally come. The period to mark the end of your life. Take the key and go to Lady Burn Castle. One of her cat familiars will guide you. Two emerald sparkles flew in. They were the green, glinting eyes of a black cat. The cat flicked its tail elegantly, with the dignity of a high-class attendant. Got it. And I'll be back in a bit. Angie rose from her seat. She did it casually, as though she was really just heading out for a short trip. However, her lips would probably never touch her half-finished cup of tea ever again. We weren't together long, but I enjoyed it. Getting to learn what disgust for your own kind is like is an enlightening experience. Same here. Next time we meet, you'll have to teach me the trick to making tea this terrible. Are you happy? Now you'll finally get to learn that secret I've been hiding from you these past 12 years. I'm happy. Yeah. Now I can understand how Erica feels. It's like I'm taking a shot back at you, exposing the secret that you kept until your death. And is it a good feeling? Well, it's better than nothing. Angie nodded toward the black cat to let it know she was ready. The cat nodded back in a refined manner, indicating that it wanted Angie to follow and leapt from the balcony. Without turning back, Angie followed it, jumping out into the air as though swimming. Ava watched her go. An expression of ridicule and scorn failed across her face. Good luck, Angie. This is just the path you've chosen. You aren't six years old anymore. You're 18. Choose how to live your own life. What an overprotective aunt you are! I'm going to watch the ceremony. What about you? 
It's almost time to begin the attack, so I'm heading for the ships. I've gotta go pick up Beato's corpse. Everyone at the party can have her guts, but I get to keep her skin, so let's stuff and mount it. So even Rokinjima's tail, which is wrapped in a veil of mysteries, is about to meet its end. Which means it's also the end for you. I mean, you are a piece from there, right? <laughs> a piece is all I am. The role of a piece is to remain faithful to its role until the game ends. It's not a piece's place to worry about what happens after the game is over. True. And it's the same for me. Let's both enjoy this time while we have it. Well then, allow me to take my leave. Later. Good luck with your work. After exchanging elegant bows, the two witches vanish at the same time. Nothing remained except some half-finished teacups and the aroma of tea itself. One after another, luxury cars stopped in front of a high-class hotel in the city and guests began to step out of them. Hey, Professor Otsuki! Oh, what a surprise! I haven't seen you since the last convention. All the guests gathered here were very rich and cultured. A single hobby tied all of them together. They were witch hunters. Like-minded people who enjoyed exploring various interpretations of the Rokinjima mystery. Still, I wonder if it's really true to think that this diary of Ushiromiya Eva actually exists. True, true, I have heard the rumors myself. This is a legendary secret diary which Ushiromiya Eva hid away just before her death. It is said that she recorded the details of Rokinjima's truth in there, just like the fable of the king with the donkey ears. Humans are tragic creatures incapable of truly keeping silent regardless of secrets only they could know. <laughs> from what I've heard, a collector from Dubai offered to buy it for ten million dollars. Incredible. More evidence of the fascination that a broken game of mystery is capable of stirring. Conversations like this were breaking out passionately all over the place. Furthermore, it wasn't just guests who were allowed to enter. The press was also there in force. The broken game of mystery was such a large movement that it became a social phenomenon at one point. Though it had died down slightly in recent years, it was still a topic fiercely debated across the internet. It's hardly any surprise the discovery and intimate release of Ushiromiya Eva's diary which contained the truth of that mystery, had caused an uproar. On top of all that, the mysterious forger Ito Ikukuro was a was to and on top of that, the mysterious forger Ito Ikukuro was a to what? And on top of that, the mysterious forger Ito Ikukuro was about to appear publicly for the first time. Ha! <laughs> it's funny. Like I I don't mess up here, but I mess up after here. God. In fact. It seemed that Ito Ikukuro. Wait, am I saying that? Ito Ikukuro. Yeah, I'm right. In fact, it seemed that Ito Ikukuro and Hachijo Toya were the up and coming mystery novels for the same person. Of course, this meant that Hachijo Toya would also be appearing in public for the first time. Though she was thought to be a male author, the fact that she was actually a mysterious woman author alone was enough to cause a stir. Before the diary and mailing party, a press conference was held in one of the rooms of the hotel. I am Hachijo Toya. Madam Hachijo, we now know in the previous book sightings you were so determined not to show yourself that you even used a body double. So what has caused you to change your mind and appear before us this time? The legend of Rokichima's witch has given birth to an endless tales, considering the weight of such a legend's demise. And being the mere writer that I am, I felt obligated to show myself as a sign of respect. As a forger, you announce on the web that you have reached the truth. Does that mean you've already read the contents of that diary? And very soon, those contents will be revealed to everyone. Pardon me for asking, but is there any guarantee that the contents of this diary are the truth? What might be is nothing more than a personal account from a single deceased person. Not at all. Oh wait. Sorry, somebody is being annoying. Ah, but one thing I want to say here is... I wish I could be like her. Like... I wish I could not have to show my face and like just not just have like a body double but unfortunately somebody doesn't want to be a body double for me and like show up for me because I, I did it because to be honest I was like eh, I don't really want to show up as me be 
because I have like a I don't like being perceived whatever guess I exist now as an idea in people's minds or something <sighs> you gotta do what you gotta do to survive in a way I don't know it's not like it's whatever but Or at least I'm trying. I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I would like to be like her and just be a hermit. And and just like write without people like seeing me and then just like do things. I, I wish I was a rich hermit like her. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. Like I wouldn't need an audience either, but I have to. I don't want, I don't like it when my stuff is perceived, because, mm. But whatever, I'm just gonna have to suck it up. It's like, people can have whatever idea they want, I guess. An idea is an idea, and you know, parasocial relationships and all that other stuff. I mean, not that I don't like some people, because I, I really like it when people are friendly, it's just... Uh, meh. If I'm, if I'm out here putting myself out here, I might as well try, I guess. That's my attitude. Alright. Not at all. I guarantee it. The truth is recorded in this diary. Ooh! A stir passed through the crowd. The room was suddenly filled with camera flashes. This end Madam Hachicho's interview. Allow us to express our deep gratitude toward all the members of the press for coming on in this day. And now, we'd like to move on and allow you to take photos of Madame Pushiromiya Eva's diary. A hotel worker pushed forward a cart covered by a veil. And after looking at Hachicho for approval, he removed the veil. There lay Ushiro Mia Eva's diary. The book of a single truth lay there, waiting for its seal to be released. Hachijo held it to her chest and laughed enigmatically. Cameras, flashes came from everywhere, making the book of a single truth glint. And that is all for now! If you all like to move to the assembly hall! Still holding the diary, Hachijo left the hot press conference room to score up in the Metro Hotel. Until she went through that door that said, authorized personnel only, the journalists continued to surround her and ask questions, hoping to gather just one more comment. Ugh, that is so annoying. See, this is why, this is why I'd rather be like a faceless entity. When the door slammed shut, the world twisted. The hotel employees came back. The hotel employees became black cats wearing capes. Hachisho had turned to Feathery. Cause like, okay, if you ask me, I would rather like be a faceless entity and like be an idea that doesn't actually exist in in that sense. I mean, in a way, the idea that people would perceive me doesn't actually exist. And it's only a figment in people's mind. But still, you get what I mean, right? If you want to get into shit like that. I'm not really into philosophy myself. I'm not very intelligent myself, but, um, yeah. But yeah, something I, I also want to say is, um, I would have rather had somebody be, like, my ghost representative. Uh, so yeah. Because, like, to be honest, if I ever got my work out there, I don't want to be remembered. I want to be forgotten so bad. Like as soon as I as I stop existing on this planet, I want to burn all my works. I don't want it to be remembered. I want it to be burned with me. I don't want, to, but but like, oh, unfortunately, I have to survive, so I can't. 
Cause I guarantee you, if I found a way, I'd disappear. <laughs> I I would I would be a tree. I would be like the witches of Umineko and just be like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, let's continue. Things are getting pretty crazy out there. Did you enjoy it? How tiring. Still, that went well. And yet this diary truly is heavy. Feathering tossed the diary and Burncastle caught it. I will rest in one of the waiting rooms. You're going to be up again pretty soon. There's no time to rest. In that case, call the short break so I can probably enjoy this long-awaited excitement. I need to borrow that book. I promised Angie I'd show her first. I see. In that case, do as you please. Feathering left. Fall by her cat attendants. After watching her until she was out of sight, Burnt Castle disappeared as well. Like Erica's room, Burnt Castle's was a balcony without a handrail dug out of the bookshelf's cliff. Angie had been waiting for some time, but she had waited patiently, looking down on the world below her. I'm late, aren't I? Sorry about that. After Burnt Castle appeared, the black cats gave a bow and vanished. Here you go. I've brought it with me. The Book of the Single Truth. Can I touch it? Do as you like. Castle set it on the table and beckoned Angie forward. Slowly, Angie approached it. So, this is Aunt Ava's diary. That's right. Inside it, you'll find the single truth you wanted. You do have the key, right? Yes, right here. Angie took out the key, looked at it there on her palm, and gripped it tightly. Even the heavy lock that held that diary so securely was fated to be swept aside easily as soon as Angie readied herself. I won't rush you. You don't have to open it until you're ready. This includes the truth of what happened at midnight on October 5th, 1986, right? Yes. It is everything you wanted to know so much you offered up your life. In that instant, Two Angies appeared inside of her, taking control of her body at the same time. On one hand, she knew she had already paid a great price to learn the truth. This part of her gripped the key, wanting to avoid a second hesitation that might lead her to refuse to learn the truth now. At the final moment, with the book of the single truth right before her. On the other hand, a feeling as though she was betraying the brother and family who watched over her warmly, made her bite her lower lip. However, Though she shook, she could do nothing but watch as her white hand slowly brought the key toward the lock. What am I hesitating for? Inside, this is the final destination of my sad, painful 12 year long journey. Is it 12 years long enough? Do I want to keep living that way? That brother is an illusion created by my heart. My naive hope that a miracle might still occur. If I put my two options on the scale, then the path I should choose is clear. Slowly, I push the key into the lock and twist it. The lock opened with a click. At the same time, it felt as though a crack ran through the key in my hands. Maybe a part of that intricate design had fallen off. I couldn't tell where it was broken just by glancing at it. However, for some reason, its golden glint seemed dulled somehow. It's because you've made your choice with that key. A bit of magic has disappeared. What kind of magic? Didn't Bala tell you? He said you couldn't hand that over to anyone else. That magic, which left the decision to you, has just fulfilled its role and disappeared. That key is just a key now. It can't do anything but lock and unlock that door. I see. And I guess I have no more use for Oni-chan's key. Can I have it? Once you've read the diary, I'll lock it up again. 
Opening that lock will be a leaving. Opening up that lock will be a big part of tonight's ceremony, it seems. I see. Do whatever you want. I don't give a damn of what happens after I find the truth. Her castle slid the key from where it lay on the table and put it into her pocket. Go ahead then. Before the courage that led you here fades. I lifted up Aunt Ava's now unlocked diary. The lock was unset. Even the hinge had been released by now. Nothing stands in the way of me opening to the pages within. I thought of taking a deep breath. However, I decided against it. I prepared myself for this long ago. It'd be so stupid to feel my reluctance further. I opened it. Violently. Ruthlessly. I knew that this was the right way to open to the pages that held the truth. As soon as the cover was open, a bright light poured out. My mind went hazy. The truth was sent to my mind directly, without letters or words, to tell me what happened that day on Rokinjima. Consciousness returned gradually. Nothing was written in the open book before me, of course. This was my own blank and empty notebook. I was at school just sitting idly with my notebook open. The world had stopped. The hands on the clock had stopped too. In that case, the auditorium should have been filled with silence. However, I could hear a small commotion. In this world suspended time, I could see dark shapes sneaking in the shadows of the unmoving students. They were students with goat heads. They were sneaking glances at me from behind the frozen students, whispering something to each other. I know. I can hear them. Everybody. Everybody knows. One after another, students with goat heads grew out of the shadows all over the room. They slipped around while the students stopped in time and gathered around me. Then they all jeered out something in unison, and as if they knew I could hear, Showered me with giggles and gossips and sneers. However, nothing that came from the goat's mouth reached my ears as words. This is a world without letters or words, so no words reached me. However, their emotions and meaning did reach me, so I knew what it was they were saying. And then, when I was able to visualize it, one after another, the goats opened their massive jaws, showing their fangs that dripped with saliva, and came forward to bite me. Time was stopped for me. I was aware, but I could not move. That wasn't literally true. However, I was pretending that I couldn't hear, so I couldn't move. The goats bit me all over my body, leaving their fang marks licking me. Maybe they didn't like the taste of my clothes. Taking advantage of the fact I couldn't move, they chewed through my clothes one by one. Over and over again, the goats stuck their tongues, their jaws, their fangs onto my naked body. I was covered with drool and bitten all over. Bright red teeth marks were left behind as sharp fangs pierced my skin, leaving trails of blood. They licked up that blood like real goats, hurting and humiliating me. As I hung my head, one of the goats pulled on my hair, forced me to look up and spoke. They didn't say it with concepts, but with words I could hear. However, they weren't words of the human world. They were a witch's words. The red truth which signifies truth that is certain. This is the truth of the Rokinjima incident. I won't accept it. It doesn't matter if you accept it or not. This is the truth. After all. I won't accept it. I won't. I won't accept the truth like that. Like that. Whether you accept it or not doesn't change the truth. After all, this is the single truth proven in red. <laughs> <laughs> who cares about the truth? So stupid. So pointless. I'm the one who gets to decide if that's the truth or not, right? Even if it's the red truth, I won't acknowledge it. Work if you're given. Definitely won't accept it. 
Red Truth is absolute! Who for? It's absolutely for you guys, right? Not for me! I won't let you contaminate my truth and yours! Angie, calm down. You're the one who wanted to know, right? <laughs> Castle just watched the scene play out in silence. Behind her, the men in black suits rushed up to the fence, clutching it and screaming. Twenty! Angie just jumped off! Damn, I can't see her from here! Quickly, investigate the grand area! It's no use! There's no way! Maybe she was caught by the safety net. Let's make sure! What fools? Maybe you jumped straight down from this height. Do you really think such a flimsy safety net? Possibly see. As the Witch of Miracles, I burn cast. Guaranteed that such a miracle certainly won't occur. <laughs> body fell from the skyscraper like bookshelf and slammed against the floor of the city of books looking down from Burncastle's balcony which was as high as the skyscraper's roof did it look like a lovely red pressed flower no you couldn't see it at all just like how the death of a single lonely girl who rejected the world didn't matter to anyone in the world she probably died instantly it was only natural. She had fallen straight down from this height after all. Is it even conceivable that she would die instantly after something like that? The index finger on the right hand of her corpse stuck out, as though it was tracing something. Could it be that, by some impossible miracle, she really had escaped an instant death? And could the red blood that drained from her at that moment of her death have been the ink that drew her own personal red truth? Oh, great. I just love sirens. I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just have the siren take us out in the moment. Just waiting patiently. However, no one would have been able to tell what she had written. After all, 
The red blood pouring from her corpse had run over it all. Even this was one of your choices, and... <coughs> oh wait, I'm sorry, that was Ava. My bad. Even this was one of your choices, and... Ava was looking down at the beautiful flower of blood, radiating from Angie's corpse. I tried to keep you alive. However, you never tried to live in the future that began after the age of six. And so, after twelve years, you finally returned to where you started. The eyes on Angie's corpse were closed. However, there was no way of knowing if this was a peaceful thing. Eventually, the corpse began to melt away. At the end, it had become a messy lump of flesh, with only a few parts recognizable as human. It's hardly surprising. How else would she look after falling from that height and slamming against the asphalt? You managed to die. However, this doesn't mean that everyone will be waiting for you in heaven. After all, you reached this place by rejecting all of those in heaven. See you in hell. <laughs> no. That's probably where we are right now. So long, Angie. Huh, Ava? Perfect time. Did you call for me, my master? Clean up this scrap meat for me, if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to take this back. In Castle's hands were the key, which had lost its magic. When Angie made her decision on the book with the single truth, which had been locked up again. As you wish, my master. After looking down one more time, her castle vanished. When she had gone, Ava summoned some cat familiars and ordered them to clean up. The black cats gathered Angie's flesh and scattered limbs and threw them into a tin bucket. Even in this miserable form, Angie's soul was still living. Perhaps living as a poor description. She was unable to die from now on, forever. She would drift along in the deepest depths of oblivion, covered by the dust of oblivion, until she finally disappeared. She continued to question herself. What did the truth mean to her? It was right, and where was the place that she could call home? As her flesh began to cool, even the energy to ask these questions began to fade. Eventually, she would forget her everyday memories and even the reason why she was suffering. However, it was one thing she would never forget. That was the anguish. From this point forth, she would suffer endlessly without even knowing why. By the time the cats finished flinging her corpse into the bucket, and dumping it into the sea of nothingness. And she had forgotten even her own name. said we do extra long but <clears throat> I think we'll stop now you could tell my voice is like oh it's about to crap shoot sorry damn we're almost done though well bye